Hello again, my subscribers. Today we are doing a review. Today's review is the 2022 film, Nope. The cast is Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, Stephen Yen, Michael Wincott, Brandon Perea, and Keith David. The director is Jordan Peele. This is the synopsis. After their father dies in a mysterious accident, Otis Haywood Jr. and his sister Emerald struggle to keep their business afloat and make ends meet. One night, a mysterious object is seen flying around the sky, depleting electricity in the area and abducting horses and people. To make money, OJ and Emerald try to capture it on video and sell it for a high price. This is the review. Jordan Peele has shown himself as a funny actor slash comedian. In 2016, he surprised the world with his directorial debut, Get Out, which won him the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, well-deserved. In 2019, he wowed us again with Us. Now, in 2022, he returns to the director's chair with Nope a neo-Western sci-fi horror comedy with social commentary and a little satire thrown into the mix. All of the elements are here. Peel's careful writing, his meticulous direction, an unsettling tone and atmosphere, disarming comedy, great performances from his lead actors, and an approach to the genre that feels fresh. Which leads me to this question. Why do I feel cheated? Was it because I had high hopes for this movie after seeing the trailer? Possibly. The response to the movie has been warm for the most part, but not through the roof, like with his first two films. So, what's missing? Maybe it's the rough handling of its elements. The tone here doesn't feel reasonably as assured as in Get Out and Us. While Peel does manage to keep his meticulous attention to details in the story, for the most part, but I won't delve into spoiler territory, he leaves us with more questions than answers. On the other hand, perhaps this movie's hidden brilliance is forcing the audience to think about what it all means rather than giving us easy answers. This isn't a new technique. The late Stanley Kubrick specialized in this kind of filmmaking, and there's a solid Kubrickian influence on this movie throughout. There are other influences as well that you'll see if you have a strong knowledge of film. The sense of wonder and awe of Steven Spielberg, the minimal lighting and unsettling atmosphere of John Carpenter, the mystery and suspense of Sir Alfred Hitchcock, and the biting social commentary and satire of George A. Romero. Peel juggles many elements in this movie. For the most part, he never drops the ball for the most part. It is possible that I feel cheated because this film doesn't feel final, but rather like Jordan Peele is building a mythos of his own without telling us what that mythos is. And maybe that's why it doesn't feel quite as complete as his first two films. He did confirm, without confirming, that he wasn't finished with the Nope universe, so its incompleteness is possibly deliberate. Peel is deliberate in his approach to storytelling, and that's what I admire the most about him as a storyteller. Not a single frame or element is wasted. Everything has a purpose, and this deliberate approach to storytelling is why we'll never see sequels to Get Out or Us. Those stories are finished. There is nothing more to tell. But more stories set in the Nope universe? That's a brand new approach, and maybe that's what this movie is, a transition into a new genre of storytelling. Creative people shouldn't be pigeonholed into one type of genre. They should be allowed to grow and explore new terrain. 
So maybe that's what Peel is doing. Academy Award winner Daniel Kaluuya, who previously collaborated with Peel on Get Out, is appropriately subdued in this movie as Otis Haywood Jr. There is a whole joke about his nickname being OJ. However, when he utters the film's title, it gets a big laugh. Primetime Emmy winner Kiki Palmer gives her performance as Emerald her all. She's the perfect yin to Kaluuya's yang. Where he's low energy, she's high energy. But not once does it feel hackneyed. It feels natural. Yes, they sometimes get on each other's nerves, but you never once wish them harm. Academy Award nominee Stephen Yen is good as Ricky Jupe Park, a former child actor who now runs a Western theme park called Jupiter's Claim. Unfortunately, you wish Peel would have given him a little more to do. Spectacles, our relationship with digital technology, and the lack of respect for nature are essential themes in this movie. Park uses the UFO, some politics to the acronym are explored too, as a way to make money. One would think that given his horrific past, he would have learned that lesson. Sadly, as the film and its trailer, so this isn't a spoiler, establishes he did not. The movie was also shot on 65mm film in IMAX, which gives this movie the distinction of being the first horror movie in history to be shot in this format. Peel makes excellent use of this format, so it's not just for show. Beyond that, analog also plays a significant role in the form of Antler's Holst, Wincott a world-renowned cinematographer that still prefers analog film, and Angel, Perea, a tech salesman. He has his theories about aliens and UFOs. Angel and Antlers are utilized perfectly. They both play off each other well in the analog versus digital fight, but the movie doesn't get bogged down in that topic, which is a good thing. If you've ever shot on film, certain scenes will become even more intense than if you haven't done so. Fortunately, I have shot a movie on film, which I don't recommend you rush onto YouTube to see. Overall, Nope is an experience, unlike anything Jordan Peele has done previously. Your best bet is to see it on the biggest screen you can find. The details stand out more. But don't go in expecting a balls-to-the-wall horror movie. It's not that at all. Instead, go in with an open mind and let the story unfold before your eyes. Yes, you will get plenty of horror scenes to slake your thirst. One particular scene at the horse stable comes to mind instantly. But you may also get something more out of it so long as you keep your expectations low. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and favorite the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with everybody. Subscribe today. I upload every Saturday, or at least try to. Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of new videos, like the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Tumblr pages. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy. And remember... It's chaos. Be kind.